Our gospel lesson today is from the seventh chapter of Luke, Luke 7, verses 11 through 17. The scripture is printed in your bulletins. Luke 7, verses 11 through 17. Soon afterward, Jesus went to a city called Nain, and his disciples and a great crowd went with him. As he drew near to the gate of the city, behold, a man who had died was being carried out the only son of his mother, and she was a widow. And a large crowd from the city was with her, and when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her and said to her, Do not weep. And he came and touched the bier, and the bearer stood still, and he said, Young man, I say to you, arise. And the dead man sat up and began to speak, and he gave him to his mother. Fear seized them all, and they glorified God, saying, A great prophet has risen among us, and God had visited his people. And this report concerning him spread through the whole of Judea and all the surrounding country. May the Lord bless this reading of the scripture to our hearing and our understanding and the living of our faith. Would you bow your heads? Now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Do you remember being in church on Mother's Day as a young child? In some churches, attendance on Mother's Day would rival attendance on Easter Sunday. There were probably many reasons for this. Obviously, it was a time for families to come together, just as some of you have come together today. But also, it was a custom in many churches to hand out corsages to certain of the mothers. Remember, the oldest mother would receive a corsage. The youngest mother would receive a, car, a, a corsage. The mother with the youngest child present would receive a corsage. The mother with the oldest child would receive a corsage. In some churches, the mother who had traveled farthest to be there on that Sunday, the mother with the most children present would receive a Corsage. It was a happy time in the church. One year ago, on Mother's Day, most of us were in our own homes. It was a time when most churches were not having in-person worship. And so a year ago, on Mother's Day, most of us were not with our church family. Maybe it was the time for families to come together but it was a different kind of Mother's Day. Isn't it good to be back here today on this Mother's Day? At this time, I want to recognize all of the women who are present, not only the mothers, but all of the women who are present. Will you stand at this time, please? All of the women who are present, will you stand? And all of you guys, would you join me in expressing your appreciation for these women? Thank you. We do appreciate you and love you. You may be seated. I recognize all of the women who are present for several reasons. One reason is this. Even if a woman does not have biological children of her own, often she can be a kind of mother to other children in her extended family, an aunt perhaps. School teachers can serve as surrogate mothers. This is a time, even now, in the year 2021, 
when we haven't completely gotten our act together about how we understand and treat women. There is a commercial on television now for a local car dealer. The car dealer and his wife are in front of the camera. He says, I believe behind every good man stands a good woman. Really? <laughs> in, in 2021, is that what we want to say? Maybe it would be just as good to say, behind every good woman, there's a good man. Or maybe even better to say, when men and women stand together beside each other, they're, they're both better. I am amazed at what a good job most mothers do. I read a story recently about a little boy who went to his mother. He was obviously upset. She said, what's wrong? He said, every time I go to a wedding with you, someone comes up and pokes me in the arm and says, you're next. Little boy, eight or 10 years old. Mother said, that's all right. They're only joking. It's not a bad thing. So the next time the little boy and his mother went to a funeral, he went up to an old person and poked them in the arm and said, you're next. <laughs> tough job being a mother, and it's kind of tough being a minister on Mother's Day. It's tricky. I know for most people this is a joyous occasion but I know for others, there, this can be a difficult time. A colleague of mine told me one time the week before Mother's Day, I dread Mother's Day. He and his wife were childless. I don't, I don't know why they chose not to adopt, but that was their choice. And so for them, Mother's Day was not a joyous time at all. For persons who have a close relationship with their mother, this is a joyous time. But for persons who are estranged from their mother, this is a difficult time. Hear what two men, two men we would consider to be successful, said about their mothers. Abraham Lincoln said, all that I am or ever hope to be, I owe to my angel mother. Pretty good. Another successful man, at least in the eyes of the world, a popular man, a well-known man, Johnny Carson said this, my mother was the harshest blankety blank I've ever known in my life. When his mother died, he did not attend her funeral. Through his publicist, he sent out a statement saying, the witch is dead. This can be a tough day for some, for some persons. We come today to celebrate mothers. If you notice the uh, title of the sermon today, I actually stole the title from one of those wildlife shows I love to see. It's called Big Cat Diary. The title of one episode was called Magnificent Moms. There were several episodes of how animals in the wild, mothers, took care of their young. One of the most interesting stories to me was when a male lion approached the hiding place where this mother lion was keeping four of her babies. The male lion was not the father of the little lions, and male lions kill baby lions who are not their own. He could smell something and as he got closer to the nest, almost close enough to reach out and grab one of the cubs, 
The mother came flying off of the place where she was hiding, jumped on the male line that outweighed her about 200 pounds, and he was out of there. A magnificent mom willing to sacrifice her own life for the life of her offspring. If you notice the sermon title, however, it's not just magnificent moms. It's magnificent moms, question mark. Did you happen to see on the news this past week the story of a mother from Dell City? She had left her children, 11 and 15 years old, and went somewhere back east in January. The 11 and the 15-year-old were left to fend for themselves. What food there was in the house ran out shortly after the mother left. We don't know her story. We don't know why she left. Maybe she thought someone would come along and care for her children better than she did. But they tracked her down and arrested her. The children are now in the care of DHS. Would we call her a magnificent mom? This can be a tricky day for some people. If you were blessed with a loving mother, even if she's gone now, you can give thanks to her and you can give thanks to God. If you lived with a mother who made mistakes, join the rest of the human race because all of our mothers made mistakes. If you are a mother and you make mistakes, join the rest of the human race because we all make mistakes. Our scripture lesson today is an unusual story about a mother we read who lost her only son, a widow. In that society, that meant her future was bleak. No husband to care for her, now no son. She was overcome with grief. And we read in the scripture that when Jesus saw her, he had compassion on her. Perhaps he was thinking about Mary looking ahead to a time that he knew his mother would lose her son. So we read that he saw her and had compassion on her, touched the stretcher that the bears were carrying, and said, rise up. And the young man rose up. Now, if you have a few doubts about this story, you're in good company. You can read many biblical commentaries about this, and many biblical commentators will say, well, maybe he was just in a trance. He wasn't really dead. When the philosopher Kierkegaard heard this kind of statement, he said, the church can do a good job of turning wine into water. It has been said that we kill the best among us only after we have killed the best within us. This is a time when the church needs to hear the words, rise up, rise up, O church of God, have done with lesser things. Give heart and soul and strength and mind to serve the King of Kings. On the church calendar, this is known as the sixth Sunday of Easter. We are still in that period on the church calendar that we call Easter Tide. The church says it's not enough just to celebrate the resurrection of Christ on Easter Sunday. We need several Sundays to do this, perhaps to remind us that when Christ is present, when Christ is present, even the power of death is overcome. As Jesus was willing to help this mother, so the living Christ is there to help you. 
in my personal experience, I have known two mothers most closely. Suzanne and I were talking yesterday. Uh, our grandson, Hayden, went to his senior prom last night. 54 years ago, Suzanne and I went to our senior prom. We were just a couple of, you know, scatterbrained kids then. But the years passed, and we were blessed to have two children, Jason and Sarah, and I was blessed to see what a wonderful mother Suzanne was to them. As for my own mother, I've shared with some of you before, I remember learning to read on Sunday nights at church when I sat in my mother's lap. She would hold the hymnal and I would follow along as we sang the words. I was maybe four or five years old, but that's how I learned to read. And it was a good place to be. Perhaps I felt the safest place in the world to be, to be sitting there on my mother's lap. That's about as good as it gets. Later, as a young adult, I realized that my mother was the glue that held our family together. She had been bitterly disappointed by the two most important men in her life, her father and her husband. But she hung in there with my dad and held our family together. She wasn't the best mom in the world. We trivialize women when we say that. You don't have to be the best mom in the world. You just have to try to be the best that you can be and know that you'll fall short, and that's all right. I want to close with these words. Our mothers, like our fathers, are to be honored. The good book says, but if Jesus is to be our guide, honoring our mothers doesn't mean either idealizing them or idolizing them. It means seeing them both for who they are and for who they are not. It means speaking the truth to them. It means the best way of repaying them for, the, for their love is to love God and our neighbor as faithfully and as selflessly as at their best our parents have tried to love us. It means seeing that they are taking, taken care of for the end of their days. May it be so for each of us on this Mother's Day and always. Amen.